What's up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be diving into one of my most anticipated games of the year. This is Enshrouded. And if you didn't see it when we got a chance to play a big, chunky demo, probably six or eight months ago in there, this is an open-world action RPG with a lot of art kind of survival evolve type mechanics where you are building a base, exploring around a giant, magical, colorful realm, fighting monsters, and trying to restore things back to the way that they were. In this game, you are the only survivor after a post-apocalypse. The good news is everyone else has some kind of flame magic that sort of like bonds them to this world. And so you can bring them all back using a mystic summoning stave in order to repopulate the world and make things happen. But in order to make that happen, you must defeat the Shroud. And so today we're going to dive on in for about 30 minutes and see if this is something you wanted to add to your wish list or otherwise pass on. If after watching this game you wanted to get it for yourself, I got a link for you down below in the description. You can also find a link down there to my Twitch stream where I will more than likely be live on the day that this video goes live streaming the game so that you can slide through and you can come say what's up. But let's go ahead and get started. Right now, I'm about two hours on into the game. I've been playing for about an hour and a half, two hours, just kind of like moseying around, kind of getting familiar with the game systems and trying to figure out if this is the kind of thing that I would dump a lot of hours on into. And the good news is that I think if you are into sort of action RPG survival games, this game hits that button right on the nose. There's a lot of exploration here. There's utilities that help you get around. There's flight. There's a whole bunch of things that you can play around. Ow! You can also get stabbed in the butt with a spear if that seems like the kind of thing that excites you. Like, I don't, I'm not going to pretend to know anything about your kinks. Whatever it is that gets you there, man. But right now I'm diving down into a valley that's near my home to clear it out of some of, like, the undead menaces that are around here. The downside to that is being inside this shroud is tremendously catastrophic uh, to my character if we stay down here for too long you can see like a timer at the top of the screen you're not allowed to be inside the shroud for a while otherwise you get converted into some kind of weird troglodyte zombie looking thing i'm not exactly what they're actually i'm not exactly sure what they're actually supposed to be but i'll tell you this they're nasty and they're mean let's go ahead and dodge roll away real fast if he decides he actually wants to throw down and hit us with something nasty he can do that but for the moment, I actually need to get through here kind of rapidly. While I'm down here, I'm also on the lookout for a bunch of metal shards on behalf of a blacksmith that I recently brought back from, I guess, the realm of slumber or, like, the realm of something. I don't really know. Either way, he was inside this weird container, and I broke him out, and now he works for me. And that's how the whole thing functions. Since we have a blacksmith, we also need to find ores and goodies. Because as you may have noticed, I'm wandering around basically wearing band-aids as armor. It's not working out great for me right now. And I'd like to be a little bit more effectively girded if I can manage it. Let's go ahead and finish him off real fast, like the dash move right there that it just pulled towards the enemy. Sometimes in these areas, you're going to find little canisters. Those little canisters, they'll actually refill your light meter up there because in the storyline of the game, you're called like a flame bringer or like a light bringer or something like that. You'll notice that while we're running around the actual landscape, every single torch and every single candle kind of gets illuminated by the magical powers of our butt spine. And so that's why we're the light bringer. We're trying to dispel the shroud and bring light to this realm once more now that all the humans are gone. I have no clue what that is, but it looks gross, and I definitely don't want to touch it. Uh, we are enshrouded right now, which is kind of unfortunate. We are going to need, I think, a little bit more resistance before this works out for me long term. Block him up right there real quick. Oh, God. Okay, yep. Perfect parry, though. Love to see that. Please die. Okay, there are a lot more of them over here than I suspected. So it may be time for us to fall back for just a minute and maybe think about some of our life decisions. I got to get out of this valley pretty rapidly. Otherwise, my resistance is not going to last. Poof. I think I just barely made it out of the valley here. I'm not exactly sure. Oh, my God. Okay, we made it. Unfortunately, my shroud resistance is not going to be strong enough to let me dive down in there long term. And I'm lacking, like, a grappling hook utility that it wants me to use for just about everything around here. So let's go back to base, and let's just kind of think about the things that we can accomplish from where we're at right now. Like, how can we make this situation better? How can we kind of advance our way through this? It may also not be the worst idea 
to start. Nope, don't want to do that. As I was saying, it may not be the worst idea to also break apart a lot of the stuff over here for, like, nails and metal, because that seems to be what I'm sorely lacking right now. Unfortunately, the HP on a lot of this stuff seems to be tougher than what I can handle. Got some books and things right there. That one's laying down in the ground. Did that give me a metal shard? It did not. Unfortunate. I was hoping that breaking up the old armor would give me one of those shards that I need. As of yet, I've been having kind of a, a big problem finding metal shards. So here's a little hut that I threw together. Nothing too special. This guy's the blacksmith right here. I rescued him from some kind of like prison chamber, hibernation chamber type deal. And he's been helping me out with various utilities. As of right now, I'm actually capable of crafting up. We can do this right here where I take like some dirt and I put it inside of there uh, with some of my wood and it will produce charcoal for me. Unfortunately, it takes a good long bout of time in order to get that done due to the fact that this is meant to be sort of like an online game uh, that you play with multiple people. But there are things that I can knock out right this second too. Like with the blacksmith, he was wanting me to make a forge, which is actually why I ended up needing the charcoal and I needed the metal scraps is so that I could bang that on out. It'd also be really, really nice if I could get myself some actual honest-to-God armor crafted that I think would probably help out while we were down inside that nastier area. We can get a hat going right now. If I do, like, manual crafting, how much stuff for strings do I have? Nice. All right, so I've got the stuff for the strings. We can go down to the fur armor set, and we can at least throw on a hat, you know what I mean, so that my head is now girded with equipable resources over here. Well, it's not the most attractive hat, all right? I'm not feeling like the sexiest that I've ever felt in my entire life, but my cranium is slightly better protected than it was previously. So I'll kind of take it. Uh, this game does have durability on all the equipment. At first that irked me until I realized you walk up to your workbench and when you interact with the workbench, it automatically repairs every single thing inside your inventory. Which is pretty cool. I would still prefer a system that has no durability entirely. Hopefully as time goes along, we'll get some of the server controls for this game so that you can disable durability entirely. I've never felt like durability is a mechanic that adds anything to a video game. In fact, quite the contrary. I find it sort of annoying to have to run around with like four different weapons in my backpack so that when I go on long expeditions and the weapons break, I can just swap them out very quickly without having to go back to base. That's, I think, honestly, my biggest problem with durability systems is they force you to build, like, three of the same spear just so you can go out to, like, adventure for, like, 45 minutes without having to come back home. I guess that's always been sort of my, my major beef with durability systems. I usually prefer that it take much, much longer to craft the item, like a lot more resources, but it just has infinite durability. But nonetheless, the game does at least attempt to assuage that problem that I have by just making it super easy to repair your stuff when you go back to a workbench. I kind of want to, like, cruise around while we wait for that coal to get made. Because that's really what I'm waiting on right now is the coal so that I can make the forge, which will then expand my blacksmith out to a tier 2 blacksmith. So let's look around and see if we can't maybe find some of the things we need around here, like metal scraps or whatever, in order to get around. Oh, God. I've been struck with fart spores. They're all inside my mouth right now. This is the worst. There's a dead guy back here, and not one that I killed. All right. Well, it doesn't look like there's anything metal inside the basement right now, but it does look like that maybe cleared the shroud from existing. Nope, it did not. Never mind. I was hoping that we could maybe clear this out so it'd be a little bit safer next to our base. What happens if I mine this rubble right here? Oh, it's actually, like, literally called rubble. Can I, like, salvage it or something? Let's look. Doesn't look like there's any salvage opportunities or anything else that I can play around with. I can salvage the rusty sword, though, which gave me some runes over here. The game has told me that runes are for upgrading my weapons and kind of, like, refining them and making them a little bit better. I haven't had a chance to tool around with it just yet, though. The game does have a building system, as you might have guessed. The building system works reasonably well. I haven't really had any problems with it so far. Sorry, I'm being run out of my base by bees right now. I don't know exactly how to get rid of bees in this game. 
Ah, it looks like you light them on fire. So there you go. I tried hitting them with a sword, and obviously that wasn't the most effective strategy. So, like, I'm glad that I attempted fire, but what I need to do right now is I need to take my crafting workbench, and I need to make another storage chest, but I need nails in order to do that, which is kind of a bummer. It's a bummer because nails are using up my metal supply right now while I'm kicking it. There we go. We'll throw that in right there. Is that going to be slightly... Hey, it is. It's slightly better than what I have. Good. Let me go ahead and, like, store everything up here. Downside is, womp womp, you can't craft out of your chest. So that's going to be one of those day one things that they need to implement into the game. If you don't know what I'm talking about, basically it's preferable in any game like this to avoid fiddly diddly inventory bullshit. Uh, by making it such that every crafting utility inside of your base checks inside of your storage for the things that it needs and automatically uses it if you end up needing that thing in order to build something. This game does not have that right now, and I consider that to sort of be like one of those day one things that needs to exist inside of a modern 2024 survival title. I almost said 2023. Time's kind of flying, ain't it? So in my desperation for metal, I have returned back down into the shroud, which I think is honestly what they want me to do. But we're going to need to get some furs and stuff, too, while we're in the neighborhood in order to, like, effectively get this done. But this has been, so far, the best place that I've found for finding a lot of metal scraps. Unfortunately, I'm taking arrow fire right now, so we're going to have to do something about that. Can I jump and grapple up there? Oh, it's got a grappling hook spot that I can't get to. There's a book right there, too. Throughout the game, you're going to find books all over the place. Oh, my God. They have hand grenades. Okay. You maniac. Oh, did he jump down? Is that what happened? Oh, you messed up. That was like your one advantage was that you were up on top of that thing, and I couldn't get to you. Now look at you being all dead and stuff. Oh, he gave me his bow, too? Nice. I'll take that. Bows are good. Anybody else down here want to have, like, considerable quantities of smoke? I think they want the smoke. There we go. We'll just drop a couple more of them right there. But I think we're good to build our forge right now with all the metal shards and stuff that I have. Ow. Grenade, bro. Stop. Quit it. That's annoying. Don't do that. I vanquish you. There we go. Combat thus far has not been that complicated. But I will say... Oh, apparently I can replenish my maximum time. Stand near them to feel their effect. Gotcha. Okay, that works out. The combat system is not super sophisticated, but it does have a dodge roll system. It does have a perfect parry system. As of yet, I have not memorized the window for said parry system. I, I've, I've done it a couple times, though, on accident while kind of, like, spamming my right click trying to figure out where the window's at. It wants me to go down in there, doesn't it? The real question is, do I want me to go down in there? I feel like the answer to that question is like, nah, Familia, I don't feel good about any of this. What kind of loot you got? A little bit of fiber right there. I would have liked to have seen kind of like a mantle system, too, where your character, like, grabs onto ledges. Hey. What's up, man? Don't run up on me like that. And then we got the archer with the grenade over there. I'm going to eat a berry real fast just to get my HP regenerating. And then we'll go deal with this idiot right here. Dude, this whole area is like squirrel hold with little caves and things. If I can actually get this fog cleared out, there's a lot of spots for us to investigate and also to check out around here. Did these break? I struck it for a very, very long time, and it was taking damage, but it does not appear as though it breaks. These cages right here, though, these are great for getting scrap metal, so I'm going to go ahead and grab these real fast. I think there was one other thing I needed while I was down here in the valley, too. Like, I think I had some stuff that needed shroud wood in order to be crafted. There is magic in this game. I did see staves and wands and things like that inside the master loot list. I'm playing a warrior right now, though, with my stats. I've only leveled up once or twice. Level ups seem to be fairly infrequent. You do get rewarded with XP for, like, everything you do, but it's kind of like a trickle. If you've ever played anything like Ark, you'll kind of take my meaning. I think I needed, like, 10 or 15 shroud wood, though, to make my glider, and I did want to get a glider today pretty badly. So now that we're back at home, we needed to fiddle around with... Did we need the... Let me see what he had going on. So I think I was working on the forge. We just need some rocks for that, and then we can bang that out right this second. There are scrappy pickaxes and things that I can make, too, with my metal scrap. 
Yeah, we would need some string for that guy over there. I'm curious about this bow, too. So, like, what's up with the bow? We just have, like, scrap arrows. I have seen rabbits and things around, and I do need fur. So maybe we go on a little bit of a hunt and sort of see what we can find out here. There's, like, some goats over here. That might get us the loot that we want. As far as I know, goats are made out of leather, right? Hey, there we go. Animal furs. That's exactly what I'm looking for so that we can get our new armor set knocked out. I also need to find some twigs. The downside with that is that... So I've kind of picked through all the bushes on this side of the ravine because that's one of the few places you get sticks from are from like the little the kind of scrub brush things that are around. I've picked up all the scrub brushes, unfortunately. And so we may have trouble on that front. Hey, I got him with that second one, though, right there. That's the good stuff. Hunt seems to be going pretty effectively right now. So after a little bit of farming, I think we may be ready to move up to, like, some better armor here. Yeah, it's kind of looking like it to me. So I'll make that guy. Basically, I'm going to bang out all of this because it all gives me more resistance than I previously had. That's pretty much it, is that I'm running around, like, in starter gear. And so I would actually like for this stuff to be my new gear. There we go. Get that stuff all taken care of. We've still got enough metal left over. Yeah, I've definitely got like a... I don't know, dude. This seems like the kind of outfit that's conducive to swamp ass. That's kind of like the feeling that I'm getting just like looking at it. I don't know. I, I can't judge how cool the air temperature is right now. So it's kind of hard for me to guess how comfortable and or uncomfortable this is going to be to wear. But still, it definitely gives me that vibe of maybe like an outfit that's going to be unpleasant. So for both the glider and the grappling hook, I pretty much just need string. So we should probably go back out and get that done. I don't think the gear that I'm wearing right now is going to increase my resistance down inside the elixir well. But I think I've got to cross the ravine anyways and go to the other side to find some more bushes because I'm pretty sure I've murdered every single bush on this side of the river. You can fast travel from just about anywhere on the map, so I made a quick trip on over to the other side to gather up all the string that we were going to need in order to make both our glider and also to make our grappling hook. So there we go. We got those two tools knocked on out. I don't know if those are going to be things that I need to equip. I also don't know how the glider works, and we should probably figure that out. It looks like you actually just equip them, and it looks like the glider is actively a wingsuit. So, it's time to burn in and nearly off myself, jumping off of a big awesome cliff. So, let's do this thing. Oh, buddy. Yup. That's really, really high. Have I ever mentioned that I have, like, a weird thing about heights? Have I ever mentioned that? Stuff like this in video games is rough on me. I don't like heights one bit. It looks like you don't actually die when you burn in. It looks like you're okay and you don't take any damage from it, so that's good. What was that right there that I just broke? We landed on top of this tower. But I don't know if there's any actual utility in us being up here. I also don't know where I am. What is that, salt? Looks like salt. Yep, that's salt. Okay, well, we probably use that for cooking meals or something like that. The game does have a cooking system. You sit down by a campfire. It doesn't play like the Monster Hunter music, but you still have to time it right. Oh, God, what the hell is that thing? Nope, don't like that at all. Don't know what that was. Oh, they're everywhere. That's probably less than an ideal situation. Okay, so you guys just kind of get out of my way for a second. I haven't even eaten any food. I'm not ready for any conflict. We did get a scrappy sword, which is good, though, in case this one wears down on me. In fact, let's see if we can make it to the elixir well. I don't know where the elixir well is by comparison to where we are, but it can't be far. Looky there, I was right. It wasn't that far. It was just over a hillock. I have been having little performance issues here and there, and texture popping is pretty noticeable. Uh, in this game, I just keep getting little chuggies, basically. I don't know if it's loading things that are, like, beyond my eye line or what, but I do keep getting little chuggies, which normally I would have chalked that up six months ago to my computer getting older, but nowadays I got a new one for recording and for streaming that's got, like, a 4090 and, like, you know, 64 gigs of RAM and, like, top-of-the-line processor, so I'm guessing the chuggies are just an optimization issue, although that does make me a little bit worried for people that have lower-end systems 
and how this game is going to scale into that. What is going on down Is there going to be like a boss or something? Let me eat some food real quick. I know that I have food on me, I think. Oh, I don't actually. I thought I had cooked food on me. I guess I must have stored it on accident. So this game has the exact same system that uh, Valheim has where you eat food and it makes you regenerate and it makes your health meter and your stamina meter longer. I actually very much prefer that system. I think that's actually a really good system because it makes hunting and seeking out better food sources not just like a good idea, but required. What's that right there? Treasure chest, what you got for me? A bandage, I'll take that. I'm a little bit worried I'm not gonna be able to find my way out of here. And I wasn't also paying attention to how much it took me in terms of my time left over to get down into here. What in the hell is that thing? A fell thunder brute? Oh, there he is right there. Yeah, that's our... Okay. Okay, he shoots a little shockwave. Ow, he kicked me in the face. Rude. You gonna kick again? Okay, he's not gonna kick again. I do need to get some stamina back though. Get some backstab damage off right there. Missed me with that one. Gotta get some stamina back. Gonna give this a second. Okay, all right. Kinda ate one right there. Wasn't planning on eating one, but definitely ate one. Can't really dodge right now because my stamina is low. Let's go ahead and bandage up. Ooh, the enemies push you and try to attack when they see you healing. Gnarly. Okay. Fair enough. Oh, his weapon went all the way around. Bummer. Okay, get another bandage on me. Let's get some stamina back. We got this guy. He's no biggie. He's no harm. He's no foul. I'm not worried about him. Although, running out of stamina right now is kind of a bad thing. Let me stop off for a second and get my meter back. We 100% need to get this wrapped up. There's just no... Wow, three dodges taps out my stamina completely. That's just brutal. Oh, I got kicked by that one too, huh? All right, fair enough. Give me a bandage real quick. And down he goes. All right. So we took out Big Dog over here. What's he got? Thunder Brute Head, a Tainted Axe. Definitely take that. I gotta chop this thing down. All right, let's chop this thing down. I'm guessing this is how we clear the shroud off the map. I should probably be retreating and, like, running away right now. But, hey, did it drop any loot right there? No loot? Okay. Well, it is a lot clearer and brighter in here, and I can breathe again. So that's good. Let's have a look. Is that lava right there? What is that? Looks like I can... St oh, no, 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 no. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. You almost got me. Almost got me. Okay. It, it is definitely a hazard to my toesies, even though I don't know what it is. That's fair. Aids in the sense of exploration. Don't go out into the glowing red stuff. Who would have ever guessed? You know, you'd think I would have thought to myself as a lifelong MMO player, don't stand in the red shit. But apparently that was just too hard of a thing to factor on in. Now that we're not in the shroud, though, I think I should be able to teleport out of here. I'm going to go ahead and grab as many of these shards as I can. We'll go back to base. I'll swap out. So we've got another melee weapon right there. I like that the boss dropped the weapon, too. Although I would be curious how that works in multiplayer. Like, if you've got yourself and, like, three or four teammates, does everybody get their own loot? Does everybody get the axe? Does only one person get the axe? I have questions. This guy does 14 damage versus 16 damage. Does it do anything else, though? I guess not. I guess not. Um, I didn't want to delete that. I wanted to salvage that. That was an accident. Damn. Okay. Doesn't really matter that much, but... I guess I can just use it as an alternate. I mean, it does look a little bit faster than my sword attack, too, maybe. Maybe it's just perceptional bias. I don't know. Let's go back up to the surface and see what the world looks like now that we've done the universe a favor and repaired some of the shroud. The game does have a climbing system in it. You can only climb at designated points. It's not going to be like Genshin Impact, where you can just jump onto a wall and spider monkey your way on out of there. A frozen core wand. 
interesting. Feeling fairly rewarded by exploration right now. I'm not feeling cheated or anything else like that. Like, I feel like exploration is definitely a focus of this game. And there is loot inside things that, like, catch your eyes. There is loot for you to claim. There's things to find. It doesn't look like the shroud completely goes away. So it looks like we cleared it a little bit. But, like, if I go back out to here... Okay, I'm still going to be enshrouded. Gotcha. So clearing out the shroud is going to be a little bit more of a task than that. What's up with the wand? Like, what does the wand do were I to use the wand? Oh, it just gives me, like, a little Harry Potter attack. That may actually be preferable for hunting now that I think about it. Like, I don't know. I would assume for balance reasons... Bows probably hit a lot harder than wands do because wands don't cost me anything to, like, fire. Whereas for a bow, I've got to craft arrows or whatever, which is that extra step in there that one would assume. Actually, it looks like it tracks. Interesting. I wasn't even on with my shot right there, and it was like a heat-seeking missile. Cool. Now that I have the grappling hook, I kind of want to try it too. There's a grapple spot right there. I'm guessing it's just going to work like the hook shot from Zelda, but I'm not super sure about it. So we might as well try it while we're on camera right here, right? Uh, not enough stamina. Oh, it's actually like judging me right now. Gotcha. Oh, that was pretty sick, dude. I didn't hate that. Yeah, it effectively works almost identically to the hook shot in Zelda. There are specific points you can shoot it at, and it just grabs and pulls you on over. Hey, we lit a lantern right there. You see that? That's the powers of my flaming booty magic right there. All right? I light everything on fire. There's a dead guy over here, too. Has he got anything on him? Metal scraps and furs. What about you? You lootable? No. Okay. Yeah, that kind of worked. I wasn't expecting it to do what it did, but hey, I can at least get a... Cr oh, there's a treasure chest down there. What's up, treasure chest? Want to hang out with me? I could definitely use some more arrows. I'm not going to complain about that. Not in the slightest. But I do feel rewarded for exploring right now. Like, I don't feel like I'm being, you know, punked or anything by going out to spend time looking for treasures and utilities. Still enshrouded. This is one of the games I've been looking forward to the most in 2024 by a significant margin. I've been very, very excited about this one. I've been pleased so far. I think I've played the game for about two hours, two and a half hours right now, which I think is good for an impressions video. The main issues that I have personally noticed are texture pop-in issues that happen pretty close up. It's possible that I just didn't go through and like max out my display graphics or that auto detect didn't do that. The game does look quite a bit tighter when I've got it. I mean, I thought it would auto-detect and just put everything on max, but it didn't. Game's looking pretty good right now. You won't be able to tell with YouTube's compression. But game's looking pretty good on max settings. Pop-in might possibly be related to that instead. Chuggies might even be related to that instead. I don't know. I'd have to fiddle around with it a little bit further. Sometimes weird things happen with graphical settings that cause chuggies when the game is uglier versus when it's brighter. I love that the wand is throwing lighting and shadows right there. Gorgeous. Just really, really awesome. I'm pleased so far. I'm definitely looking forward to playing it quite a bit more. And so that answers the age-old question, do I want to play more after recording the video? Yes, I do, which is obviously a good sign. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we are fooling around with a title called Enshrouded, an open-world survival sandbox. Uh, with RPG elements, if you wanted to see what the progression looks like, you've got a skill tree over here. It sort of labels what's in each direction, whether you want to focus on bows or whether you want to get, like, double jumps or anything else like that. I would probably actually move towards the double jump and also stamina efficiency. I really felt like with that last fight, we were struggling for stamina a lot. But anyways, I like the game quite a bit. I think it's pretty cool. I can't wait to stream it this week. I'll catch y'all later. Bye, folks.